essentially today the the technology that I'm introducing, think of it like a traditional data warehouse that can capture many different data sources that provides you know the security, the underlying architecture to capture, store, analyze data. Where or what exactly is it that sets KX apart? Well, as soon as you start to introduce the time dimension to that data, so the temporal element, so if you're calculating pressure or temperature or mass readings from devices um, over the course of a day, years, months, and you want to analyze those trends and use that, um, I guess, temporal context to predict what may happen in the future. If you try to put that data with that temporal context into a traditional data warehouse application, you're really going to struggle. Um, so through, I guess, some of the presentation today, I'll, I will present on some examples of that where we've come across clients in the past that have tried to do that. And you will hopefully see many of the benefits that KX extols from those types of use cases. Um, Robert Park at IEX um, has a really good quote, which says that we use KX to record a continuous stream of truth which we mine every day in search of answers to new questions as we seek to refine both the products we provide to customers as well as the operational processes we use to deliver that product. Um, that continuous stream of truth is essentially what KX excels at. Uh, from my past experience, I've been involved in a number of projects, both finance and non-finance. Um, I know today we're, we're focused more on, let's say, process manufacturing. Um, but in the past, from my experience on the finance side, especially, you know, with a KDB system, we've been able to actually highlight gaps within the data providers themselves. Be able to go back and say, look, there's key areas here wrong with your underlying data set, which you're publishing to clients globally. And we were able to get them to those data providers to rectify those issues, not just for us, but for themselves and their other clients as well. Okay, so, so KDB is extremely powerful in analyzing that temporal data context. To the right-hand side of uh, the diagram, uh, you'll see that KX is essentially being coined the modern data warehouse, or what we also call the data timehouse. Uh, it runs on AWS, Azure, GCP, on-prem. Um, it combines, as I mentioned, that data warehouse, um, typical data warehouse components with the ability to stream very large quantities of vector and matrix data and apply operations to those metrics and ve vector uh, types uh, in, in real time and also on the historical data. Uh, within the application itself, there's still the area of BI tooling where you can still connect other third party systems. Uh, you can connect your Python scripts and so on in to analyze the data. You can leverage our own programming language, Q, for example. Um, there's also uh, the the area around ChatGPT right now, which is a huge focus. Um, you may have seen, if you've been looking at our website, for example, a lot of the, the conversations around the, or news articles related to the KX and Microsoft agreements. So some of that is actually um, leveraging the power of KDB for, uh, I guess, that, that key area around large language models, uh, generative AI and so on. So providing that temporal context that's been missing if you've used ChatGPT in the past and you try to ask it about past historical events um, and providing that to um, some of the models of the future. Uh, at the very top, you will see that uh, there's just another headline that says how KX helps institutions find insights at the speed of thought on ve streaming vector and matrix data um, 100 times faster than alternatives at one tenth of the cost. Now, what does that actually mean? Well, on one hand, you can complete much, many more queries with the same size of application, or you can actually condense down the size of your application. One of the most common uh, areas or issues that I, I see and come up against is that clients are building solutions on varieties of different technologies and struggle to scale those over time. So at the top of this slide, you'll see what I commonly come across. You have a different uh, technology for real-time data capture and streaming analytics. So that would be Spark, for example, on the slide. Or you're storing that data into another third-party database, the likes of Teradata. Maybe in between those, you have some sort of a messaging layer like Kafka. Maybe that's managing the events and so on within your system. Maybe even some uh, HA or 
recoverability for upstream data sources. Um, downstream, maybe all of that's been uh, published into a, a Microsoft SQL server, which is fronting all of the downstream queries from the likes of your Power BI or Tableau types of applications, or perhaps users are actually writing their own uh, reports or analytics using Python or R. So that's traditionally what I see in that sort of um, historian type of application where clients have built um, something from scratch themselves. With KX, we can essentially replace uh, every point within that layer. So with KX technology, we can capture real-time data and have that available within our in-memory database. We can action upon that data with our streaming analytics engines or the CEP process, so the complex event processor. We can make that data available within the historical database at end of day, or maybe we want to have a low memory profile and we write that data down at intraday. We can handle all of the analytics within the application itself. There's no need to export those analytics outside of the application. Uh, there's no need to drag that data from one format to another format, which is typically what you do when you jump between various layers, like what you have in the above. KX also have a fully integrated visualization tool built into the application itself. Um, you may ask, well, why is that? Why why would KX have, have its own visualization layer? Um, well, if you think back to the slide earlier where I mentioned that temporal data set, uh, with temporal data comes huge data volumes. Um, and if you look at the likes of, let's say, a Power BI tool or a Tableau, um, you'll notice one thing that they cannot do is necessarily stream data, especially streaming data at extremely high uh, throughput, high message rates per second. Um, this is where KX can essentially excel with its own native dashboarding tool, uh, because we're able to have that direct subscription through we don't have to transform that data into any other kind of formats. We're able to natively connect using IPC and display that to the end user. Um, that can be good for, uh, I guess, if, you, if you're in the area of fast analytics, but it's also good if you're just bringing large amounts of data back to the UI itself. It gives a much more seamless user experience, and it's much easier to develop that and package it all up as part of one entire solution um, to deliver, I guess, to clients. Now, in in almost every discussion, it's it's very rare if we can replace absolutely everything because clients usually have invested a lot of time and effort in their own applications that connect um, into those various databases. And in those scenarios, that's that's completely acceptable. That's that's fully okay. Um, for each of those layers that I've just mentioned above, we actually have a variety of interfaces that can be leveraged to connect in and, and query data out of the system. Um, so being able to leverage something like an ODBC interface or leveraging our Python interfaces to support your Jupyter notebooks, um, things like that are all completely possible as well. So usually the conversations then boil down to where are the problem areas that you're experiencing today? Um, and how do we solve those issues? So what essentially is KDB Insights Enterprise? Well, it's the fastest and most efficient cloud native data analytics engine available today. Um, simple as that. So starting with this diagram, uh, what you'll see is out of the box components at its heart. Uh, this is essentially capturing and storing all of the data from the upstream data sources and persisting that into the database and then allowing a common entry point for all downstream data sources to essentially query and access that underlying data. So those components are available out of the box that allows you to uh, handle that persistence uh, and make that data available. And all of that data is then stored within KDB Plus, which is the world's fastest time series database. Um, KDB Plus, you will commonly find in most big data applications um, globally. So then on top of that layer, Insights Enterprise provides additional features, which includes machine learning libraries out of the box. Those are available within the pipeline builder, for example, or out of the box connectivity options so that you can, instead of importing third party libraries in order to connect your data sources, you just use the adapters that are there and available out of the box. And you're going to see many of those as we move through uh, today's conversation. It provides a number of DevOps tools 
Uh, so for example, uh, there's Terraform scripts that come with the application and allow you to deploy it and spin it up really fast. Um, that creates its own bundle. And again, we'll we'll go through some of those details on deployments in, in a few slides time. Uh, it also integrates with uh, common monitoring platforms. So each of the three main cloud providers, for example, have their monitoring system. Uh, CloudWatch, for example, on AWS, the system hooks up directly and publishes alerts and so on into publishes logs into. It has its own diagnostic system as well, built into the application itself, which again is great if you are um, not wanting to go to another application in order to understand what's happening within your own system. You can just navigate to the, to the diagnostics um, itself. Within the application, you can define your own functions. You can make those available for query to other applications. You can package your code. Uh, you can do very fast on the fly data analytics and visualization. Um, so if you've just captured data and you want to start working on building a data model or before you build the integration to another component, you just want to check the data itself. You can do so within the application here. You can write that code in SQL, you can write it in Python or even use Q if you like uh, for that added performance benefit. It also gives you that enterprise security level, which is going to be critical if you're rolling this out to uh, many of your own clients. Uh, it integrates directly with Keycloak, for example, that allows you to then link up with your clients or customers, uh, identity providers, allows you to add and remove users and so on. And again, I mentioned the dashboard builder um, that's, that's built into the application as well. So Insights Enterprise is, is orchestrated through Kubernetes. Um, so everything that you do through the UI will automatically scale the underlying compute and pods required um, in order to capture and make that data available uh, to the downstream applications. Um, as I mentioned, the identity access and management layer uh, comes through the integration with Keycloak, which um, I'm sure you're familiar with. It's pretty much industry standard now. The UI itself actually if the application is based on Nginx, again, another industry standard as a web server. And then out of the box, the system will also provide um, multi-node data replication and recovery. Um, what you'll see later when we get into the infrastructure is the uh, minimal number of nodes to run the application is three, which allows us to guarantee then the types of message delivery coming through into the application itself. So that's a very high level introduction to KDB Insights Enterprise.